Hello learners, hope you are well. Uh, in our last presentation, that was I think lesson four, we were able to look at structures of materials that don't break easily. And one of those structures was the plastics and then the fibers. We were able to discuss the plastics in details and we're not going to go through them again. Uh, we were also able to look at polymers. And we say that polymers are compounds that are formed by a combination of many small molecules called monomers. The monomers were able to, to, to distinguish, were able to categorize the polymers into two broad categories, that is the natural polymers and then the synthetic polymers. We were being able to discuss the synthetic polymers in details, and that still included the plastics. Now we want to look at the natural polymers. What are natural polymers? These are long chain molecules obtained from plants and animals. And examples of the natural polymers include mainly those ones that are part of our bodies are the hair and the nails, and their monomers is keratin. We also have the natural rubber, we have the cellulose, we have the starch, and then we have the proteins. Uh, Natural polymers are classified, can be classified according to their sources, where we get them from. Basically, we have two major sources, that is the plants and then the animals. Examples of the polymers that we extract from plants include the cellulose, the starch, and then the alginate. Then we also have the animals. We have from the animals, the polymers which include gelatin, chitin, and then protein. We can also further classify the natural polymers depending on where they are found. For example, the polymer cellulose is found in cotton, paper, and wood. Then the starch is found in rice, wheat, corn, and then potatoes. Then we can find proteins in eggs, silk, and wool. We can also find natural rubber. Uh, this one is obtained as a milky liquid called latex and is used to make cut tires, shoe soles, and then bags. Now, what are the properties of natural polymers? You find that the natural polymers, actually their properties are almost opposite the properties of the synthetic polymers. Remember we said that among the synthetic polymers that most of them are non-biodegradable. So here we find that the natural polymers are biocompatible and biodegradable. So that's why we can be they can easily be hydrolyzed into non-toxic products. They, they can easily be built by condensation polymerization, whereby by condensation we mean that we join a monomer with another monomer, but there is loss of a water molecule. They are highly porous, that means that water can easily drain into them. Then they are easily available. We can easily find the starch, we can easily find the proteins, the eggs, and so on. They are easy and cheap to make products out of them. Then they can easily be attached to each other molecule by functional groups. Can we discuss in details about the cellulose? Cellulose, we said one of the major products of the cellulose is wood. What is the structure of cellulose? Cellulose is mainly made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And in the structure of cellulose, there is both the covalent bond and then the electrostatic forces that hold the polymer chains together. So because of the combination of the two, the covalent bond and the electrostatic force of attraction, you find that wood is very strong. And then the chains aligned next to each other to form the grain of wood. It also consists of long thin fibers called cellulose fibers. So you can see this is a structure of cellulose containing the oxygen, the hydrogen, the oxygen joined to the hydrogen by a covalent bond and then a layer, a chain of cellulose joined to another chain by electrostatic force of attraction. What are the uses of cellulose? We've seen so many materials made out of cellulose, for example paper, wood, rayon for clothes, cellulose acetate for films, and then the isos of linen. Fibers are also made from polymers. We find that cellulose is made up of fibers. So what are fibers? Fibers are made from polymers. 
and these fibers are also classified into two that is the natural fibers and then the synthetic fibers the natural fibers are classified into three groups still depending on their sources we have those which are put from minerals for example asbestos which is dug from the ground then we have those from plants for example cotton sisal jute linen hemp and then we also have animals for example silk wool and mohair what are the uses of fiber Fiber is used to make clothes, fiber is used to make threads. Look at the thread you put in the needle. If you actually split it, you'll see lots of fiber making one thread. Then it is used to make ropes and so many others. So now let's look at synthetic polymers. The synthetic polymers are the artificial polymers. These are man made polymers which are made as a result of technological innovation and chemical treatments. And you'll find that we mainly treat the natural polymers to come up with the synthetic polymers. For example, nylon, polyester, rayon, and terrelin. Now, what are some of the properties and uses of poly the synthetic polymers? I'll take an example of the polyester, which is used to make raincoats, hats, and then roots. What are some of its properties? It is durable and resistant to many chemicals. It is strong but light in weight. Then it is easy to dry. It retains its shape. It's resistant to stretching, shrinking and abrasion. So if you just imagine a raincoat, if it did not easily dry, would you be able to use it to protect yourself from rain? Then look at the rope. If it was not strong, could you easily use it for skipping? And if it was not light, could you easily use it again for skipping? So you find that really the properties match their uses. Then nylon. Used, nylon used to make dresses, used to make swimming costumes, used to make truck pants, windbreakers, parachutes, ropes, bedspreads, so many others. What are some of the properties? Nylon is also strong and elastic. It's easy to wash. It dries quickly and retains its shape after laundry. It's resilient and resistant to heat. That's why you can be able to wear clothes made out of nylon because they resist the heat and you can be able to use it over and over again. Then we have terrain used to make plastic bottles, nanoven needle punched carpets, make automatic clothing, vacuum packaging machines. Now, what are the properties of terrain? It is a very strong fiber. It will suffer very little loss in strength when wet. Then it is elastic in nature and possesses the property of resist crazing. It can be set into permanent plates when subjected to the correct temperature at the time of manufacturing. Terrain is also easily washed and it dries quickly. It is non-injured by acidic substances when used in the modern process. Then it also doesn't bleach when you subject it to cleaning agents. Then last, we also have rayon. Rayon is used to make clothes, curtains, bed sheets, blankets, carpets, bandages, and surgical dressings, to mention but a few. What are the properties of rayon? It is, rayon is a versatile fiber. Then it is soft, cool, and comfortable, and a very good absorbent property. Rayon fiber has the same comfort property as other natural fibers. Then rayon can replicate the feel and texture of silk, cotton, linen, and wool. Rayon can also be easily dyed in variety of colors, and you obtain something new that really will give value to you. Rayon has very low elastic recovery from any fiber any fiber. Rayon is very strong and reveals good durability. Rayon fibers recommended care for drying cleaning purposes only. Uh, those are some of the few synthetic polymers we can talk about and a few natural polymers that we're also able to talk about. Please enjoy the reading. Thank you.